welcome to The Photography Guy. I'm your host, The Photography Guy. Let's get started here with another great photo show. Hey, yes, good morning, everybody, and welcome back once again to The Photography Guy. This is episode number 77 for Sunday, January the 10th, 2016. I'm your host, Jack. It's time once again that I invite you into my little studio here to learn together how to make better pictures. Together, we can capture this great world we live in one step or <laughs> One shot, one snapshot at a time. So folks, I hope, uh, last week, did you catch that? I think last week I said it was 2015. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but when I read my show notes, if I don't update all of it and it's not too far into 2016 yet, it comes that, you know, sometimes you just get a little bit lost there. Hey folks, please check out my website if you have a few minutes to do so. And I hope you do. Checking all the cameras there. And that website is thephotographyguide.net. Once again, it's thephotographyguide.net. I know a lot of people like those .coms, but it wasn't available. You can comment on these shows. I would uh, appreciate it if you did. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please check out my YouTube videos at 42 Technoman. The number four, the number two, Technoman, where you can watch these shows live and in living color. And I think you get a lot out of it. I mean, I, you know, I like doing the podcast thing and I know you folks like to listen in your cars, you're riding down the road, but we do a lot of hands-on stuff here on this show. Uh, as you may, if you're listening, you're like, well, what's he showing? What's he, what's he uh, demonstrating now? Well, that's where the, uh, the YouTube videos come in very, very handy. So check those out at 42 Techno Man. If you want to learn everything about Photoshop elements that you could possibly know, learn all the great tools in there. Learn how they interact with them. Learn how to use those tools. Well, then you want to go to jtclearning.com. All one word. jtclearning.com. And you'll find hours of Photoshop elements uh, courses there. I uh, now have 12, 13, and 14. Be advised right now that uh, Photoshop Elements 14, that course is selling for $30 instead of the normal 40 and that's because you get to get in uh, as an early bird special because I'm still building that course. Once that course is built, then the price will go up to 40 So get the early bird special today. Sign up right now. As soon as the show's over, don't sign up yet. Wait until the show's over. Then I want you to go and I want you to sign up for this show, uh, or sign up for those courses for Photoshop Elements 14. Also, if you're not a member of our Facebook group, please come over and join us. Uh, it's completely free. Uh, somebody the other day said, Jack, well, how do I join that? Uh, I signed up and I can't see anything. Well, it's called a closed group. The reason we did that is, you know, I just wanted to kind of be able to manage that group uh, and not just let everybody come in. Uh, so if you come in there, obviously you probably came from these shows. Uh, you heard about it from somewhere. You said, hey, I want to go over there because there's a lot of great learning, uh, a lot of great paying it forward on that Facebook group. And the Facebook group, if you search for it, it's Jack's Tech Corner. So this morning I want to do something that I've done in the past, uh, some time ago. Uh, we used to go out and I would shoot video and I would share that video with you during this live show. So I created a video the other day and uh, actually uh, I was talking to somebody at work and they said, did you happen to post that video on YouTube? And I said, no, because I'm waiting for the live show to kind of release it. So I'm going to release it here this morning on the live show. Um, I'm going to let it speak for itself. I'm not going to tell you what's in it. Um, so I want you to follow along with this video, and uh, after the video, we're going to get into some pretty cool stuff, so stick around. Don't run off. Um, during the video, I'll be watching the chat room here to see if anybody's chatting in there and saying good morning to uh, everybody that's in there. Uh, matter of fact, right now, I'll take a quick look just to see if there's anybody coming in this morning. Uh, we got Peter already from the UK. Good morning to Peter. Uh, good morning to Bob. Uh, Bob's out in California, so good morning to you, Bob. Good morning to Virginia. Um, and so that's the three that I see in the chat room anyway, right now. So good morning to you also, uh, Virginia. So thank you so much for joining me here for the live show. I appreciate that. We are going to go now and hopefully if I don't have any technical difficulties, we are going to go right in to this video. So pay attention to this video. 
When I come back, we're going to talk some more about this great stuff that I have to share with you. So I'll see you back here then. Okay, folks, I want to reveal what's in this box on this live show today. You know, we've been talking a while about photography. We've been talking about different cameras and whatnot. And um, I was looking at buying a wide angle lens. Now, a lot of you out there have said, Jack, you, you might not want, well, I was looking at a fisheye lens. And a lot of you out there said, Jack, you might not want a fisheye lens. You know, so I started looking around and said, okay, well, if I don't want a fisheye lens, what would I want? And well, on New Year's Eve, well, New Year's Eve day, I guess, uh, not New Year's Eve, of course, because we were celebrating for the new year. But I decided that, you know, it's time to maybe start looking at um, what's in this box. And I found a really, really good deal. And I thought, well, and I, and I talked with my wife and uh, we kicked it over a little bit. And she said, well, go ahead and buy it. I mean, you know, if you don't like it, obviously, uh, Adorama has a great return policy. You can return what's in this box in 30 days. So, again, I did buy this from Adorama, and um, it was a good deal. I looked at Adorama, I looked at B&H Photo Video, and I chose the package from Adorama because they had a better package deal. So, hopefully, everything I purchased is in this one box. So, let's go ahead and we're going to do an official unboxing, and we're going to talk about what's in here, and maybe a little bit about the decision of why I purchased this, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's go ahead and get started. It's pretty exciting. I just received this today. So let's to see what's in the box here. Now, without spilling my coffee that's on my table here, I uh, don't want to do that. There we go. All right. So, what's in the box? And uh, what are we going to have today to show you? Well, very simply, packing. Uh, this this packing stuff, uh, you know, to protect your shipment and uh, these little bubble. Yeah, that, no, that's not what we purchased. Let's take it out of there. Take all this out of there's a lot in here. Um, we're gonna have to remove all of it. No, we can actually remove what's in the box. They got it packaged really nice and neatly there, and there it is. Uh, is there a packing slip in here? Nah, uh, nope. I don't see any. So. All right, let's take the packing slip away because you may see what was in this box. There is a little plastic package right here. And uh, so what's in this package? What, what did I buy if I didn't buy the fisheye lens for my, my trusty Nikon D600? Now, I've been a Nikon shooter for many, many years, folks, and you know that. Um, and why would I be buying what's in this box? Doesn't make much sense. Well, let's go ahead and start <coughs> unfolding this stuff. They really have it taped up. <clears throat> they really did a nice job of taping all this up here. Wow, it's really super taped up. Now, hopefully, the lighting's all right in here. You can see everything that's going on. The tape is like opening a Christmas present. So the first thing is a, a charger, a drop-in charger. Okay, that's part of the package deal. Uh, so this is nice because you can plug this into the wall socket and you have a, a nice little charger. Um, and I believe when I got this charger, um, and I'm hoping that this is not the battery, but an additional battery. So this is up to 79% uh, better battery life. Uh, it's a W series. It's a uh, 1,020 milliamp hours capacity. And this is a spare battery. And let me uh, focus on this a little bit here and bring this up. We're going to zoom this in here so you can see the battery. There's the battery. So that's part of the package deal right there. Um, the drop-in charger. I didn't really show you a close-up of the drop-in charger, but let's show you the drop-in charger that came with this package. There's the drop-in charger right there. Get a better view of it there if I get my fingers out of the way. Uh, it's just really nice. It's just you plug it into the wall, and it's a, it's a nice little charging uh for the battery pack. So, uh, and whenever you buy anything like this, you should have an extra battery. So let's keep going here. The next thing they sent me is a dusty box. No, that's not true. Next thing they sent me here is a 64 gig, 64 gig SD card. All right, because you need a memory card to uh, put 
what's in this box, to use what's in this box, uh, you're gonna need a 64 gig memory card. So there we go, okay, 64 gig memory card. The next thing that's in this box is uh, a screen protector, semi-hard, so I'm gonna have to look at that. I, I don't really like screen protectors, but I guess if it's going to protect it, um, maybe I'll try to get that on there since it was part of the package deal. All right, the next thing is they sent me um, was, well, so I did get a lens, actually. Um, we're gonna cover the name up here, and you can probably guess here in a minute what lens this is. This is a, um, this is a, uh, right there, 55 by 210 millimeters. 55 by 210 millimeters, so it's a really nice zoom lens um, to reach out there and capture those uh, special events. So uh, it's not a fisheye lens, but it's, it's a very nice zoom lens. And then what I did purchase here, and I hope that the other lens is, yeah, it looks like it's with it. There's the packing slip. So what I did buy, and I'm going to uh, reveal now to you uh, the name on this box uh, right here is, yep, you might have guessed it from the other boxes, folks. It's a Sony mirrorless 35 millimeter A6000 camera. The mirrored mirrorless 35 millimeter, so it's still, it's a DSLR, okay, but it's mirrorless. So why would I buy a mirrorless camera? Well, in talking to a buddy of mine, Jake uh, from Cincy, uh, a lot of times in the chat room, he goes by Jake the Snake. Uh, he went all mirrorless. He actually sold his Nikon D600 to go mirrorless. Now, I believe he purchased the A7. Uh, the A7 is a full frame camera. This is a cropped frame camera uh, that I've picked up. And like I said, it was just such an amazing deal for this package uh, that in, in looking at the fisheye lens, I spent about the same on, the, on this whole package deal as what I would have paid for that fisheye lens. So I thought this is a pretty, uh, pretty good deal. How can I pass it up? I kept talking to my wife and she said, well, if it sounds that good, then, then go ahead and buy it. So let's go ahead and we're gonna look in this box. I haven't taken anything out. I just opened the box with you guys. So hopefully everything's good here. Um, we're gonna pop, pop the box open. First, we come with a uh, limited warranty, which I did pick up an additional. If you buy from Adorama, they got really good deals on extended two and three year warranty. So I believe I picked up an extra, an extra additional three year um, warranty on drops, spills, breakages. Uh, if they can't repair it, they'll give me a brand new camera. Um, this is phase one, something from phase one from Sony. Um, and I don't know if this is uh, I'm going to have to read this because I don't know. Phase one, it, I've been playing with it on the computer. It is a, a capture program uh, that, you know, will do capturing uh, of, of sorts uh, of tethering and stuff. So phase one is, I guess it's Sony's um, the idea of Lightroom. We have a manual written in totally in Chinese. Can't read that one. Uh, one touch Wi-Fi connectivity. Now, because this camera does have built-in Wi-Fi, so that's good, and, and I'll play with that, and we'll experiment with that. But from the reviews I've watched with the camera, they say that you can actually take the camera and wirelessly connect it to like an iPad or your phone. Your phone will, will do all the controls of the camera. So it'll do the wireless uh, triggering, it will do the ISO setting, it will do, um, because this camera is everything. This is not a point and shoot. This is not your point and shoot camera. This is a 35 millimeter camera. So it does all those settings that you would see on the Nikon, uh, like a, a 7100, uh, Nikon 7000, it's a crop sensor. So, uh, or your Canon Rebels, all those settings are on these cameras, but you can control that with your cell phone. So that's, that's pretty cool, that's innovative. Uh, and actually we have a lens and accessories uh, little booklet here so you can look up new lens. Uh, we do have the manual written in French here, and then we have the manual that I'll be dealing with written in English here. So they do cover kind of all facets <clears throat> with all the uh, great little, <clears throat> excuse me, the great little uh, pamphlets there. So now the box is really, really well packaged. Let's see what else we got in here. We have the uh, a strap here. It says A on it. I don't know if it says anything else, but it does say A on it. 
Uh, you would think it would say A6000 on there somewhere, but it doesn't appear to be, so it's a strap. Um, also in the box here, um, we do have a charger. And a lot of people are saying there was no chargers to these. This is a wall charger with a cord on it. Okay, I do like the drop-in chargers better. I have one of those for my Nikon D600. Um, I also have one of those for this particular camcorder, this Canon camcorder I'm using to record these videos for you. Uh, I like the drop-in chargers because I can just plug them in the wall and charge up my batteries. So this is a charger that you plug the cable into. Um, we have the eyepiece. Uh, the eyepiece is very important because it'll get your eye a little bit away from the camera. So I was worried about this. Uh, I thought it would be more rubber, but it seems like it's a very hard plastic. So we'll have to play with that and see how that works out. So that is the eyepiece. Um, and yeah, so the battery they sent me is an additional battery with this package because here's the battery that came with the actual uh, camera itself. Very, very small battery, um, so it's, it's very lightweight. And that's the idea with the mirrorless cameras. It's, it's a very, very lightweight camera to travel around with. Uh, we do take, you know, vacation every now and then. It'd be nice to have a camera that you can travel with. Uh, I normally travel with my DSLR folks, and uh, we went to the Grand Canyon, and I, I told you that story before where we took my camera out, and uh, I took my, uh, my trusty camera bag, and we had my... Um, uh, 70 by 200 millimeter uh, Sigma lens in there, which weighs a lot in itself. And uh, it was just too much to carry. So we couldn't take my zoom lens, my big zoom lens. So we chose to take the 50 millimeter and the wide angle lens, which worked out. It worked out fine, but it was still very, very heavy to carry around all day. So I wanted something lighter. That's why I was looking at the mirrorless cameras. Uh, we have the charging cable, or this is a cable you can hook the camera to your computer if you wish to get your photos off of the camera. Um, and then the camera itself is right here. And I guess the lens is probably on it. Now, this camera does have interchangeable lenses. Obviously, you've seen the lens there. But, folks, this is the whole entire camera. This thing is really, really amazing. Everybody that talked about this camera said, hey, this is a really nice camera. Um, but look how small this camera is uh, right here. So you look at the size of this camera and how small it is. I mean, that's the lens here. And this lens happens to be, I believe, let me see if I can see it on here somewhere. Uh, this is a 16 by 50 millimeter lens. The lenses do come off if you push the little lens release button on the bottom, you can take the lenses off. I also chose this camera because it has a hot shoe on the top. So there's a hot shoe so you can plug flashes in. Uh, I'm going to play around with my uh, external triggers, my flash triggers, and see if we can trigger this thing. Um, it has its own little pop-up flash right there, so there's a pop-up flash. And they say it's spring-loaded, so you can spring it back and you can shoot it up to the ceiling and do bounce flash with it. Um, all your controls are on the back of the camera, on this little uh, tag wheel here. So there's a little wheel on the back. Um, and we'll be doing more reviews and we're looking at this camera later on, but I wanted to show you just how incredibly small this camera is. And it is super, super lightweight. I mean, there is no weight there at all. Even with the battery pack, uh, the battery maybe weighs a couple ounces, so I don't see where it's going to be a very, very heavy camera. Um, the memory card and the battery goes in the bottom of the camera, right there, just like most uh, cameras do. So I'm going to get that memory card opened up there and figure out how the memory card goes in. It looks like it goes in the side right there. So we will look at that. The latch just latches shut. It does have, they say, a tilt screen on the back, um, and you can see there where it tilts up. So you can shoot, you know, either through the viewfinder, which is getting incredibly hard to find with the point and shoot cameras. Uh, with You want an eye viewfinder with your cameras, but there's also a tilt lens. Um, I don't know if I want to play with that whole, a whole lot. I don't want to break it, um, you know, naturally. So, but that is, whoops, going the wrong way with the camera there. That is the actual, um, basically the unboxing, if, if you will, of the new um, Sony. A6000 camera, A6000. Um, again, you can get these very, very reasonable, look them up, and it has everything that you'd want for a semi-pro, amateur, or pro photographer. Uh, one guy I watched said he actually shoots weddings with this camera, so you can definitely shoot weddings with it. Um, you know, I'm going to have to shoot with it, I'm going to have to learn and, and try it out. I want to do some studio shooting, I want to do some tethering to the computer or wireless to the computer. 
uh, so we can shoot on the live shows and show you guys uh, some of the photos that I'm getting out of this camera. But uh, all in all, I mean, I'm pretty impressed with it already. Uh, it's got a digital zoom on it, which is really cool. Uh, or not a digital zoom, and a motorized zoom, so you're not turning the camera. You're just moving the zoom up and down, much like my camcorder does. As you see it zooming in and zooming out, and it will do that automatically. Um, so it is a very, very nice camera. I'm going to lay that aside. The last thing I'm going to show you that I do want to take a look at this lens with you, and uh, we'll have a look at this and see how it looks here, if I can get it open, of course. Um, again, this is the uh, 55 by 210 um, and the day after the New Year's Day, I looked back on their website and this, this deal was gone. It was no longer there. So we're just going to pull this paper out here for a minute and we'll pull the lens out. And again, this lens already in my hand, it is nothing like my 70 by 200. I mean, this lens is very remarkably small. And uh, these are E-mount lenses. Okay, E-mount is Sony's mount. Um, so we can actually take um, and just pop the cap off. That's the E-mount on the back here. We'll zoom that in and give you a little quick look at the back of the lens. Um, and again, this lens is incredibly small, uh, just amazingly small here. So very, very nice little lens. Now, I'm going to do a comparison here for you uh, in a second. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead, let me zoom this out here, and uh, do a little comparison between this and my 70 by 200, which is you have uh, seen on the videos before in the past. So uh, hold on, and we're going to uh, show you that comparison. So in comparison, this is the new lens. It's a, uh, like I said, a 55. Uh, it's a 55 by 210. This is my 70 by 200. Let's get this camera zoomed up here and look at the differences of these lenses. Uh, it's really amazing. The one uh, here is the 70 by 200 lens. Uh, I'll take this uh, hood off so you can see that. Um, it weighs in probably about, and I don't know, and every time I talk about weight, I get screamed out on YouTube, but um, you know, a good five pounds, three to five pounds. This thing, is a 55 by 210 and it weighs in about I don't know maybe eight ounces if that uh, so I'd much rather carry this lens around with this new camera than this lens now uh, in hindsight this is uh, like I said a Sigma it's for the DSLR uh, and I use this on the D600 full frame camera um, and you know that I showed you a few weeks ago when we did lenses that uh, it hooks to a monopod or a tripod to kind of hold that lens up. You don't need that with this lens. I mean, this lens is here. Um, and it does, does not look like this lens has a, a motorized zoom. So I guess it's just a regular barrel zoom. I just turn it in and out, and we'll have to play around with that a little bit and see how that works out for us. But, but anyway, so that is the comparisons between those two. Um, I'm going to do like most of us do on... Uh, uh, you know, that watch these channels that, that uh, buy this stuff, you know, I'm going to put the battery in and hopefully uh, Sony gave me a little charge to turn the camera on anyway, maybe at least to set the date and time on it or whatever. And uh, then I'm going to do a little bit of playing around there. So, and I'll be doing videos uh, throughout for you to see, but, but thanks for, uh, you know, actually watching um, the live shows and I hope to bring you a lot more interesting stuff. That's why I bought this. I wanted to bring the mirrorless camera to you, my audience out there, and, and show you that we can do the same types of photography with mirrorless that we're doing with mirrored. Um, why did I go with Sony? Uh, from all the reviews I've read, everything I found, I found that Sony is um, Sony is the 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 mirrorless leader. Um, so, and I'm sorry if you like Nikon. I am a Nikon shooter, and I'm sorry if you like Canon. Uh, I'm sorry if you like Fuji or whatever else in the world's out there. Um, but anyway. It shows that Sony is innovating. Uh, they have the mirrorless market. That's what people are buying. Professional photographers, uh, semi-pros, amateurs are flocking to their, D their DSLR um, mirrorless cameras. So um, be that what it is, that, that's just what's happening. And it's not for me telling you that. It's all the, all the research I've done on it to purchase a mirrorless camera. 
I can tell you that Nikon just purchased uh, Samsung recently. It, was, it hasn't been too long ago. And they purchased the Samsung mirrorless technology. So Nikon's going to try to get into the game now. Canon, Canon's kind of dragging their feet. And I don't know, I think it might be because Canon has that whole Mark V lens or, or Mark V series of cameras. Uh, it seems like the, the videographers of the world are flocking to Canon to buy those. They're really great to do video with. Um, and this will do full HD video. You know, it'll do all kind of that stuff, uh, just like my D600 does video. But I don't ordinarily do video with these cameras. I'm mainly uh, a still photographer with this stuff. When I want to do video, I use my camcorder here, my, uh, my Canon camcorder that, that rocks the world for video. I mean, it does a great job. I've had it for a couple of years now, and I love it. Um, so anyway, that's just that's the truth. That's that's the way it works. Um, you know, I'm not lying to you. If you do your own research, you'll find that Sony does have that market. So, okay, folks. So we're going to return you back to the regularly scheduled programming. And uh, thanks for watching this. Uh, I'm I'm very happy to bring it to you, and hopefully, I, I won't let you down uh, to bring you some mirrorless camera action and some great photographs from a mirrorless DSLR. Thanks, folks. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. So there you have it. The, the official unboxing of the, uh, the new Sony, the new Sony mirrorless camera. Um, and folks, let me tell you so far I have been, um, the first day, I guess what, uh, to be honest with you, the first day I started playing around with this camera. And I wasn't so much uh, thoroughly impressed, I guess, uh, because I was trying to make it do everything the first day that my DSLR would do. Well, there's a couple things that you have to learn about it. Um, you know, like I was trying to tether it to the computer to, you know, how you folks have seen my past videos and you plug a USB cable in and you tether it to Lightroom. So when you take a picture, it shows up on the computer so I can use the camera during uh, live shows. And that... Uh, was not working. I mean, I have since got it working now. I mean, I've actually found some uh, help files on the internet that says, look, this is what you got to do. Um, but that stuff's pretty cool. The first thing I want to tell you about <clears throat> in that video, uh, if you watch that video, and I know I'm going to have a lot of people bringing this up because after I shot that video, I started thinking back. I was like, well, wait, you know, the the Nikon lens or the Sigma lens that I have, the, um, the 70 by 200, is much bigger it is much heavier but we also have, also have to remember it is an f 2.8 lens so it has that big wide opening uh, to allow more light to go into the camera itself so that is one reason why it is bigger you can buy smaller lenses for your dslr cameras um you know they sell 55 by 200s you know they sell uh, well, pretty much whatever you want uh, or 55 by 300s are much smaller than that 70 by 200 lens because they have a variable f-stop. We talked about that last week. Uh, I see a lot of people in the chat room here, and I'm going to go back and just uh, take a peek here uh, of what's going on there. But um, Martha was talking about a Sony. Um, she bought a Sony RX10. Martha, I don't know that camera, um, but I see you purchased that camera uh, because she wanted something small to walk around with. And that's kind of what I said in that video. When I was looking, I thought, well, <clears throat> and I, folks, I got a pretty terrific deal on this camera with the two lenses, uh, you know, and all the other accessories that came with it. I mean, I, I got a really good deal. It was one of those deals when you see it's like, yeah, you better buy it because it's probably going to be gone in no time. And uh, like I said, the next morning it was no longer there. So, you know, I was able to pick that up. But uh, I don't know if those two cameras have uh, all the same uh, same standards or same uh, whatever you saw i think you said what let me go back to the chat room here a minute i think you talked about the same uh the same iq quality or the same quality overall um, and and i don't know um uh, to be honest with you i'm not uh the, the you know i'm not this big knowledgeable sony shooter i know a lot about nikons because i've owned a lot of nikons now i wanted to show you though in comparison it's kind of neat because in comparison to these two cameras, if you look at my my new Sony here, I'm going to try not to drop it. And then you look at my Nikon. If I can pick it up. 
So if you look at these two cameras here, you know, side by side, you can see the differences. I mean, this camera weighs a lot and I've carried it a lot. I've done a lot of weddings with it, a lot of senior pics with it. Um, and you would say that this camera, uh, now other than being full frame, this, this one's not full frame to get a full frame Sony, you're going to have to look at, I think it's the a seven. Um, and you're going to pay, you know, probably as much as you're going to pay for this one. Anyway, um, this is a DX format lens. I think it's, a, is it APS sensor? I, I guess somebody in the chat room can help me out there. Uh, so it's a cropped frame. It's a cropped lens where this is a full frame lens. So let's say for instance, I have a 17 millimeter lens on here. It's going to shoot at 17 millimeters. If you put a 17 millimeters on a crop frame, such as the Sony, yeah, you would have to multiply that by 1.5 to find out your exact, you know, millimeters that you're at. Um, yeah. Or exact focal. Yeah. Mill whatever. Millimeters. So, uh, in that also is, we did a session on this probably a couple years ago, but Nikon is also, if you have a Nikon crop frame, a DX frame, it's times 1.5. If you have a Canon crop frame, it's times 1.6. So whatever lens you put on there, times that by 1.5, and that's what you're actually shooting at. Um, so my buddy at work said, well, then when you shoot this crop frame camera, uh, are you getting less of a picture? No. I mean, it's it's doing everything for you. So what you see in the viewfinder or on the back of the screen is actually what you're shooting. Um, you're not going to shoot and go home and see it's cropped off. It's, it doesn't really work that way. It's just you'll see more of the frame with the full frame camera than you do with the crop frame. But I've shot a lot of weddings and senior pictures with crop frame cameras. So you can be, uh, you know, a paid, remember I call it a semi-professional, um, amateur professional, whatever you want to refer to it as. Uh, but anytime you make money, you do get that more of a professional title because you've earned money uh, from your photographs. But so far, I've been really, really impressed with it. Uh, it seems to be working out really well. You know, and I look at this thing, and I think this looks more or less like a point-and-shoot camera. I mean, if you think about it, people see it, and they're like, huh, yeah, that's just that, some guy with a point-and-shoot camera. But I can control this camera as well as I can control that 35-millimeter DSLR it, because it is a 35-millimeter. Everything has full control on it. I told you in that video I was going to play around. Let me see if I still have it. And my wireless triggers uh, that I bought from my Nikon, I mean, they work on this camera. Not only do they fit, I mean, you figure they would fit, right? But so it fits on the camera, but it triggers the flashes. And I'm going to show you some test shots that I took yesterday playing around. Um, so it definitely worked. I haven't put the uh, an actual flash on here yet. I haven't played with that, but I don't usually put flashes on my cameras. I usually use wireless triggers because I like them to be off camera. The other thing I played around with yesterday and it was dead on was my light meter. I set the light meter uh, for exposure settings with these flashes and used the Sony with the flash trigger. I set everything manually because it has full manual settings and everything worked extremely well, just like you would think that it would. I mean, that totally, it absolutely blew me away uh, for that to go on. Um, the flash I talked about on the uh, video it's just a pop-up flash, so it's handy, and they say you can push it back like this. So you push it back, and it spring loads, so if you hold that, you can actually do bounce flash with it. Again, you know, if you look at this flash, if I wish I could get a nice zoom on here, but it doesn't seem like it would be the most sturdiest thing in the world. And again, I don't normally use pop-up flash. I don't really know if I'm ever in a case where I would have to put it up, but but it is there. It's nice. It's very powerful. I've played with it and everything works really, really well. A couple other things cool with the uh, with the Sony line is um, I did get to, I told you, I did get to tethering the work. I actually did that this morning. I was playing around as I was doing my show notes and there's a program you download to your computer, either PC or Mac. It doesn't matter. They have both. And it's called um, PC Camera Control. But you load that, when you plug your USB cable in, it actually takes, it, it, it takes to control the camera to the computer. So you can adjust like ISO, white balance, uh, your, your shutter speed, your aperture, and you can also snap it right on the screen. Well, when you do that, 
or when you take a picture on the camera, it will transmit that camera photo right to the computer. And then you just set up Lightroom as a, um, as a watched folder and Lightroom will pull those up. So you are tethering your camera. So that worked out really, really well. The other nice thing about the camera is uh, there's a smartphone app that's free to download. So you download the smartphone app and you can do all your controls of your camera. So you can have this on a tripod and you can be using your smartphone app. It has a live view on it. I haven't played around with all that yet because it's just so much. What I wanted to do was test the camera, test the optic, or the optical ability, optics. Yeah, the optics of the camera. Um, I did say that this has a digital zoom. Um, what I, I'm just, I should have said a motorized zoom because it does have digital zoom, but, and I even tell people when I teach uh, classes, when you have any camera out there, any camera that you're using, make sure that you shut off digital zoom. Go into your menus and make sure it's only optical zoom, right? You don't want digital because what digital zoom does, uh, a lot of people don't understand it. It actually is cropping your picture as you're going out there because some cameras will say uh, they zoom what up to, I don't know, geez, 100, 100 millimeters, 200 millimeters. Uh, but only look at the optical range. That's what you want to, that's what you're really concerned with. Because when you go into that digital range, it starts to lose information off that photo. And you start losing uh, megapixels is what it's doing. Because it's, it's actually cropping it like you would in your computer. That's a digital crop. So turn that off. So I did turn it off, but this is all optical, uh, optical zooming. So, um, so far I've been shooting on aperture priority. I've played with shutter, uh, manual. It does have custom settings. You can set up custom settings as custom white balance. I mean, absolutely everything in this small little package, um, that does not weigh a whole lot. You, I threw this around my neck yesterday. If you're watching the Facebook group yesterday, I went out and did a little photo walk uh, in the city where I live. And, uh, you know, just taking some pictures, looking at different uh, photo opportunities and grabbing some shots. I met a very nice gentleman in a wheelchair. Uh, he appeared to be, I don't know, I guess so, but he, he had a hat on anyway. So he, apparently he was a, a U.S. Marine vet. And uh, I talked to the gentleman and he said that he seen my camera and he goes, are you a photographer? And I said, well, I guess I'm a guy that likes to take pictures. I said, how's that? Um, and he goes, well, he said, I'm into photography too, buddy. He said, it's a great, great hobby. And I said, oh yeah. I said, well, what do you shoot? And he goes, well, nothing right now because his cameras, somebody broke into his place. Now he's, he's in a wheelchair, so he's not going to chase you down. Uh, he said that his cameras were stolen. So all of his stuff was stolen. So he's trying to get some money together to buy us off a camera. And it was such a heartfelt conversation just to, to meet somebody on the street. Even if it was a homeless guy that loved photography, I, I almost took this camera off my neck and said, here, pal, you know, ha have a good time with it. But I figured he probably didn't have a computer either. Um, so it probably wouldn't have worked out well for him. So, you know, but we did talk for a little bit and it's just nice, really nice to meet people. So I just wanted to share that story with you. But what I wanted to do now was take a little bit more of your time this morning. I am going to go back to the chat room just to see if anybody's saying anything. Uh, if you're not in the chat room and you want to check out the chat room, all you got to do is uh, click on the video on YouTube, the live stream video, and you can, the chat room sits right beside the video. So if you're looking for that, uh, so once you're, you know, if you're logged into YouTube, you should have a YouTube account anyway. So log into YouTube and you can do that. Um, uh, great info. Purchase the Sony. Okay, so this is from. Uh, I, I love my. I love my nephews. Great info. I purchased a Sony CyberShot Disc HX ninety V, and I am clueless. Martha, um, is a pretty great, but expensive as a DSLR. Is it pretty great but expensive as a DSLR? Now, you're talking about the, the Sony camera, and I'm going to show you that in a minute, okay, uh, Martha? So hold on. think, Hold that thought there for a minute. Um, cameras have changed dramatically, and I need a class to operate this camera. Well, you came to the right place. That's what we do here. We help you to learn your camera, to learn more about each setting along the way, and that's what we want to do with you is help you do that. Um. Now, Martha said a crop frame has more reach. I do wildlife and I need the reach. 
to me, Martha, I think that's a misconception um, because the reason you're getting more reach is because you're you're timesing it by 1.5, okay, or whatever your camera. If it's a Canon, it's 1.6. So you are getting in your in your head or in your mind, you're believing that it's more reach. But if I took my DSLR, for instance, and I bought a lens on here, um, say I bought a 100 by 600 millimeter lens, a real big lens, I'm going to have greater reach than what a 300 millimeter um, cropped lens would reach. Does that make sense? So it's based on the lens really so much more than if it's a DX or full frame. Um, but the full frame is you're going to not worry about that crop. And honestly, folks, hands down, 100%. I would never recommend. I don't know why. Uh, if you're if you're a professional, you're going to be emailing me and saying, "Jack, quit giving those people that stupid information." But if you're a professional, buy the full frame camera. That's why I bought it when I was doing a lot of weddings. Uh, we purchased it, but we also had a D seven thousand at the same time. One is our backup camera. Two is our secondary shooter camera, and it took absolutely beautiful pictures. Um, so, do you need to spend all the money for a full frame camera? No, probably not. Most of us do not. Um, the DX cameras work just fine. That's why I didn't force myself into buying the Sony A7. Uh, that's why I bought the, the 6000 because it's absolutely fine for what I want to do with it. Um, and, you know, do I want to get some wider angle lenses? Because you guys know I like to shoot wide. Um, I would like to go wider than what that lenses is on here. Uh, the current lens on here right now is a 16 by, it says 16 by 50 millimeter. So I'd like to go wider than that. I was looking at a 10 millimeter lens, which I think would give me a nice wide view uh, for doing nice long shots or, or wide shots. So that's something. But yeah, Martha, don't get too wrapped up with that that crop frame. You're do, you're right though, because if it's a crop, it has a times 1.5, so it is a greater reach. So I I, I hope that clears that up. Um, I use a Nikon D7100 for my DSLR, and I I told you just now I shot with weddings with a D7000. Absolutely superb camera. So I'm sure the 7100 is even that much better. Uh, Peter, I use uh, a D5000, D7000, and now have a D300. And the D300 would be the full frame camera. Very, very nice camera, Peter. Uh, and, and Peter does a lot of great photography. Watch him on Facebook as he posts his stuff up there. Um, the D500 just came out to replace the D300. That is correct. There's a new D500. Okay, love my 7D, um, but I use full frame lenses, and that's from Dennis. And Dennis, you're right too. I do use full frame lenses on my full frame camera. Um, I sold all my DX lenses because there's too much comparison. There's too much too much issues when you're changing lens to lens. Is it DX? Do I have to crop this down? Is you know? And when you put a DX lens on a full frame, especially a Nikon, anyway. Uh, it changes the total megapixels that's being recorded on the sensor. So there's too much to worry about. So if you have a full frame, buy full frame lenses. If you have a DX or, or yeah, a crop DX, whatever, buy DX lenses. Okay, let's take a look at some of these shots that I did. And hopefully I don't have any technical difficulties here. Let me see if I can bring these up. Now this stuff is from, let me see if I can bring this up. There we go. And let's maybe, no, we'll leave that up. That looks all right. So this is stuff that I was taking yesterday in the city, just on my little photo walk um, through the city. And this is actually Washington, Pennsylvania. If you ever come up this way, uh, you know, make sure you get a hold of me. I'd love to go do a photo walk with anybody, uh, you know, because I love these things. But these are some of the shots that I took. And I was just walking around. I was shooting aperture priority and just capturing some shots and just seeing what I can come up with. So the, this is naturally a, a portrait, putting the camera up and down, you know, uh, turning the camera on axis, up and down. And uh, this one is a landscape shot. Um, but, and you can't see it here, but I want to show you, let me see if I can't show you this. Um, I keep trying to use the mouse over here. Let me try to change my overall screen region. Because what I want to include here is for you folks, because I know you are top-notch photographers. And what I want to include here is the, there we go, the histogram. Um, 
it, it's pretty amazing when I came home. I didn't do anything to these pictures. But if you look at the histogram, you can see where all the colors are centered. You know, and there's nothing clipping off to the left or to the right. So all of this is really, really uh, just uh, just amazing color capture of this camera. I was shooting auto white balance. Uh, ISO I did set at 100, so I was shooting a 100 ISO. And again, after priority. So let me just go through a few more of these here. That's uh, apparently that's <laughs> that's where I had lunch at yesterday. A little hot dog place uh, up in Washington. And that's another view of it. I wanted to capture the front of the store right here is their uh, storefront. So I wanted to capture that. This was interesting. As much as I've driven through the city of Washington, it was interesting because when you drive through places, what happen what tends to happen is you never really see anything around you. <clears throat> this is why it's really important from time to time to get out of your car, grab your camera, and take a photo walk. So this building is gone. Uh, this building sat there for decades. As long as I could remember growing up around here, this building has been there. So I grabbed a shot of that because to me, that's a moment. That's a moment in time that you captured. This just happens to be a new bar that I want to check out. They apparently have 52 taps, so I took a shot of that, but... So as you see, when you do a photo walk, you're just looking for interesting things to capture. And I'm going to show you one here. This I was looking at leading lines. And the line draws you back into that picture, back into the garage. So when you look at taking photographs, when you're out just walking by yourself, look at things that make you, that make the viewer look at something else. Why I wanted you to look at this garage, I have no idea. But what was nice about it is, being able to just play with the camera and see what the camera was going to capture. And there's another shot, a little tighter, uh, again, straight back into those buildings. This is our local courthouse. Now, I want a super wide lens because I want to get a shot of the entire courthouse. The best I can do, I think it was this one, okay? So the best I could do was this one. You can see the lighting is good. The direct sunlight was coming over top of that statue, but it kind of cut that out and it seemed like it was fine. Probably being the person I am, I would play replace the sky overall, but it's still a very, very uh, decent picture. This clock, I thought, well, how can I capture this clock? And I got some ideas. I'm not going to share those with you now, um, but I do have some ideas of how I'm going to capture something that's higher than me. And, and I'll work with that and I'm sure I'll record it. Again, just the front of the courthouse, again, just walking around. Another leading lines going down the roadway here, just looking down into them buildings and, and giving you the perspective of it's going downhill. This here is just the, uh, the front of the courthouse. Again, just playing with the camera, seeing how it works. If, again, if you look at the histogram, you can see the histogram is in the centered. It's not clipping on either side, so it's very good. Um, at least to my standards, it's pretty good. You may have different standards than that. Again, I'm showing you all these. This is in Lightroom is what we're looking at these at. Uh, a little Vietnam <clears throat> and Korea War Memorial. Uh, that's really nice. And I guess they're going to put people's names on there, local folks. This is one of the oldest hotels in Washington. Um, actually, George Washington. Actually, that is the George Washington Hotel. Uh, there's been a lot of presidents have stayed there. They do have a presidential suite on that top floor. Um, so if you ever want to come here and you become the president, you may want to stay. Yeah, I think most people can rent that room also. I don't know what it costs, but you can stay there in the presidential suite. Just wanted to grab a sign there. This I was just trying to capture that flag. They were blown in the wind. I wanted to see how fast the shutter would click, and it was it was fine. It worked great. Another picture of that clock from the other side. And then back up the street. I found this. This is a very, very old Santa Claus that's in this window. Um, the store is obviously closed. It's for rent. But I just wanted to grab that photograph just to see what the colors would be like with this camera. How the colors would actually capture in the camera with lower light. And it seemed to work really, really well. Little, uh, this is interesting stuff to shoot too when you're out. Look for any murals, murals, yeah, murals. 
Some people call it graffiti, but I look for it and I love to shoot it. There's another side. It looks like a big stink bug in the middle of the screen. I don't know if it's a stink bug or a beetle, either one. This one I really liked, except I don't know what all the brown stuff is thrown up there. I really just don't even really want to know. Um, but I like the lady with the umbrella and the old car there on the right. This, I shot this through a window to see if I can get the camera to focus inside the store with no light. Uh, and it's, it did okay. I probably should have upped the ISO a little bit on it to really get, capture it. But I used to shot for musical instruments in there. I used to actually uh, practice guitar when I was a young boy. In that, right in that store and in that area is where all the drum sets used to sit. Now you see there's not even any floor left. This I found an area I just stepped inside of a storeway. And this is a doorway like back in from the street. And apparently it's it's a it really stunk in there. But apparently it's where uh, a street person lives because there was clothes, a couple pairs of boots in there. So I guess maybe somebody lives in that little area to stay out of the cold. Uh, very, very sad uh, with street people and homeless people. And I, I wish I could just walk around and hand every one of them, you know, a, a, you know, a million dollars and tell them, look, get your life back on track or even a hundred thousand. Say, look, take this money and get on track. Uh, but anyway, this is just a picture of where someone lives. Kind of sad. This I wanted to take a picture of, of wide as the camera would go. And that's about as wide angle as I got. So. Uh, then I went up to uh, visit my dad in the cemetery um, and. Uh, this is kind of what he gets to look at every day is what I feel anyway. So uh, he's been passed away for four years now, but um, when, when anyway, regardless, but this is kind of the view from, from his cemetery plot. Then I walked down the hill and I wanted to get a view without the gravestones and just of the farmland of the sky, just to see how it would capture the sky. It was a gray overcast day, but it did a pretty good job. So I think it, the camera overall has been functioning very well. It's been doing a really good job so far. Some more there. Now these these pictures here, most of you know my my friend the the gnome. Um, these pictures here was used. I, I used I set up a uh, umbrella with um a, with a flash and I set up the wireless triggers. I did do a a, um, a meter reading and then I set all the manual controls on the camera just like any other thirty five millimeter. So it shows that the uh, camera does really well. The lighting is dead on. Um, it might have clipped off a little bit for the reds to the left, but that's more of a red thing than a lighting issue. And there you go. Plus the blue wall probably didn't help it, but I didn't want to get all the cards out, the black cards and the, and the bounce cards and everything. But I just wanted to play around with it to see if the camera would, would the camera sync up with my flash units? And it did. It worked out perfectly well. So I had no trouble at all with that. All right. So anyway, we'll go back into chat room for a minute. Um, thanks. You said you love the pics. Try stitching three photos to get the whole building. And Peter, I've done that. We'll talk about that sometime uh, in the future. Uh, doing panoramics. And, and I love doing panoramics and stitching those together. Uh, let's see. And Dennis said he'd love a 70D, but it's too heavy, unfortunately. Um, Martha, yes, I know the lens sizes, but the 1.4 extra really helps telephoto reach. And you're right, Martha, it absolutely does. It uh, helps a lot. Virginia, thanks for loving my pics. It was just a photo walk, um, you know, just kind of capturing a little bit of the city. I've been wanting to do that for several years <clears throat> because it doesn't always seem like we live more in a rural area. So we live maybe... It might be 10 miles from that city, 20 miles from a major city of Pittsburgh where you can go and you can walk for days and shoot down there. But it seems like every time you actually do go for an event or something, you get up and you're like, when did that store come in? Or when did that building come in? Or when did that happen? That's why I kind of like the historical value too of your, when you're capturing things. So that's something to think about. Um, and Martha says an interesting photo walk. So yeah, get out there and do some photo walks. I think it's a, a really, really good time. Um, I had a good time. Plus, I got to meet somebody neat. So that was kind of cool. Um, let me get back to this. The photo walk. I uh, took some pictures of the time. So first impressions. Okay, so 
let's go back here. The first impressions of the mirrorless camera. Um, and I want to show you this here. I did find this because somebody was saying, like, isn't it really expensive? Um, let me just show you this. What the heck is that doing? I'll bring this uh, desktop back up here. Let's scroll this up a little bit. So this is the Sony, the actual Sony A6000. Uh, and get the price up there. Now, this happens to be Adorama's pricing. Um, you may find pricing cheaper than that. Now, this does include a three-bundle set. Look at the top there. So you get an extra battery. You get that drop-in charger that I got. And you also get the, um, um, the the backdrop there. So the the backing that goes on the back. I didn't put mine on yet. I better do that before it breaks. Um, so you do get the backing. Uh, what else I received with my with my set? So you may want to watch these for a while before you buy. But I also got that 55 by 210 lens. And I got the uh, 64 gig memory card. I can tell you doing some research with the with the um, uh, the mirrorless Sony. They make a connector ring where I could use that big lens from my Nikon, my Sigma lenses, uh, or Nikon lenses, or Canon lenses. You can use those lenses on this body. You do lose, this is the bad part, you do lose your autofocus. So you have to manually focus, but it might be something you want maybe for, like Martha said, more reach. I don't know. Um, but my overall first impression of the camera is I would tell you guys to buy it. Um, absolutely. If you've been thinking about it and kicking it around going, I don't know about mirrorless. And this wasn't even on my radar. It was not even on my radar. Um, <laughs> the the fisheye lens was on my radar. And you folks know that. That's what I wanted to buy was the fisheye lens. And all of a sudden, um, you know, I was looking around Adorama site and they had a great deal on this on this camera and this package deal. And um, I went down and told my wife and she's like, well, if it's a good deal. And I said, she goes, why do you need another camera? And I said, well, I, I don't, but this is not replacing the DSLR. It's not another DSLR that I have. It's a totally, it, it is a DSLR, but it's a totally different experience. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a different experience. She knows I like teaching these uh, classes on Sunday morning uh, and putting videos on YouTube. So, I mean, it was kind of a win-win situation there it, that we came up with that whole thing. So it really did work out. Anyway, folks, uh, let me come back to my show notes here. Anyway, I wanted to say thank you so much for tuning into this show. Uh, if Remember, if you're downloading these from iTunes, please watch it on YouTube. You can subscribe to the YouTube videos at 42 Technoman. Once again, it's 42 Technoman. If you want to learn more about Photoshop Elements, please take those online courses. Um, yes, I I do things like that. I teach, and as you can see, those courses and stuff. When you take those, or when you go to JacksTechCorner.com and donate to the show, or when you use my Amazon link, I do use that money to bring you stuff back into the studio, such as the mirrorless camera. Uh, to try to figure out, you know, the best abilities that I have about that camera to tell you to buy it or not, um, and then be able to teach you with it. So, and I'm thinking now, it, I'm not only teaching mirrorless, uh, the mirrorless capabilities, but we're still teaching the DSLR functionality, functions, functionalities. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, but go to the courses and sign up for one of those today at jtclearning.com. Sign up for Photoshop Elements 12, 13, or 14. Once again, it's jtclearning.com. I did talk, and I know a lot of people have donated to the show, and that's absolutely a, a great way to help us out. If you go to jackstechcorner.com, there is a donate button. You click that donate button. It could be 5, 10, 50, 5 million. If you hit the, if you hit the Powerball, it could be 100 million, whatever. I'm just kidding. Uh, everything is greatly appreciated, and, and I do always... Uh, Thank you for that. I want to thank our sponsors for these shows, Green Screen Wizard. If you want to buy the Green Screen Wizard from Ken, make sure you go to my website and use the link. Click on the link for anything green screen. We'll be doing more of that here soon. Uh, and Smug Mug. If you want to sell your photos uh, and be a semi-pro or, or you're a professional out there, you can set your own pricing and Smug Mug will do the rest. Go to SmugMug.com. Folks, thank you very much. I'll be talking to you next Sunday morning right here for another The Photography Guy. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you then. Until then, keep those shutters clicking. 
Keep your editors editing, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to The Photography Guy. I am a photography guy, and I'll be here once again next time for more photography tips and tricks. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the show and enjoy the music. Hey, thanks, everybody, and we'll see you back here next week. Bye-bye for now.